for the die hybrid cross now for the Drosophila lab. Um, first thing you do is go and order your flies. Actually, once again, I'll turn off the sounds and the transitions. Um, go in and order your flies. Your female uh, will once again at first just be a homozygous dominant for the wild type. Your males, you've got two traits here. The example I'm going to give is a star eye shape and a sepia eye color. So it has uh, two genes that I'm testing for. I'll then go to my cart, check out. I'll sort them out and you see I have some star and some wild type. So there is something a little bit interesting going on here um, that the star doesn't seem to be completely recessive to the wild type. Um, regardless, I want to take a uh, want to take an individual that is heterozygous. I know that the wild type female will certainly be heterozygous because her mom was homozygous dominant for both traits and her father was homozygous recessive for both traits. So the mom is definitely going to be a heterozygous. So I'll find that wild type female, which is right here. I will use her in my new mating. So I'm using my heterozygous, my heterozygote female. So I'm using her in a new mating jar. And then I'm going to go back to the lab and I'm going to um, order another male that was homozygous recessive for both eye color and eye shape which is the star eye shape, just as before. And then I now have the female homo, the female heterozygous, uh, heterozygote dominant in here, and the male homozygous recessive in here. And so this is the cross that you're doing for number two for the worksheet that you're filling out. So what do I expect to happen? Well, this is called the dihybrid test cross. And in a test cross where you have a heterozygote female and a homozygous recessive male, I expect that my genotypic ratio and my phenotypic ratio is going to be a 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. So 25% for four different phenotypes. Um, let you figure out what those phenotypes are. But what I'm expecting is 25% for each one. So we'll test this and see if this matches what I thought it would. I'm going to sort the flies out. And yeah, as it turns out, if I take this data, send it to my computer, I will once again ignore sex. Um, because I'm not worried about whether males or females have it. Neither of them appeared to be um, sex-linked traits. They both appear to be autosomal traits. So if I look at my data, it looks pretty close to 25% for all of these. So I'd go in and fill in this information into step three of the lab. And then for step four of the lab, I would have to actually perform a chi-square test. So... If I find out, once again, if I have 1,214 individuals, I expected approximately 303 of each type. So if I go in and enter my hypothesis for each one to be 303. I can then come and perform a chi-square analysis on this. So as you can see that 25% of these species of these individuals are wild type meaning they have their regular eye shape and their regular eye color you can see that 25% of them had sepia eyes and star eyes in this case they're homozygous uh, homozygous recessive for both of the traits uh, this one is homozygous recessive for one of the traits but either homozygous dominant or heterozygous for the other, and the same for the 
uh, second trait that we're measuring. So I've got my hypotheses in here. I'm now going to run them through the machine. And you can see I get a pretty good level of significance. Definitely a lot larger than 0 0.05. Okay, suggesting that my hypothesis is likely true. Um, so uh, you can then go on from number four to accept or reject your null hypothesis. On so number five, are the genes linked on the same chromosome? Well, they don't seem to be dependent on each other. It seems to be a fairly even number of um, observed versus expected here. So um, I don't think they are linked on the same chromosome. You can use that handout that I gave you in class to make sure that they're not. Um, and then go on and finish the answers to number six and number seven. Um, go ahead and fill out the rest of the dihybrid cross. You'll notice if they don't come out to uh, have a phenotypic ratio of 25% to 25% to 25% to 25% that what you likely have is a um, set of genes that are on the same chromosome or you have one set of genes that might be lethal in certain combinations with other genes and so you'll have to take a look at the data for yourself and try and figure out what that's all about. Um, if you're wondering which traits to use for your dihybrid cross, try and use traits that are given to you on the uh, front page of the virtual lab that I gave you. So um, if you look there, it says student name, number one, two, three, four, five. I assigned you each in a row. Try and cross only traits in that row if you can. Um, you can see that there's four traits. So there's quite a few different options that you're able to do there as you're crossing. So just try and do any four of them. Some traits might not be um, some traits might not be good matches with each other. For instance, if one of the options was no wings, and the other option was curly wings. Well, you know that they can't have no wings and curly wings at the same time. Um, you can still go ahead and do that cross. You're going to get some pretty interesting data. So feel free to make any of those crosses, but. Just be aware that some of them are going to be a little bit easier than others. Um, if you want to check your answers again, just take a look at the uh, allele, or sorry, the uh, chromosome map of the Drosophila that I handed out on the last day of class. Or if you weren't around for that, uh, it's also posted on the webpage uh, next to this video. All right, I hope that helps, and I hope you guys have a wonderful break. See you soon. Bye.